Okay. So I'm going to now introduce um, Lisa to, to come up just for a couple of minutes and to share with you her story and her perspective. I've done an interview with her where we go into this in a lot more detail, so unfortunately she's only got uh, a couple of minutes, but I wanted her to come up and share with you her books and what she's done because she's had a huge amount of success in this area. So let's make her feel very welcome. Lisa Messenger. Thank you. Hi, this is very exciting. I think um, book publishing is one of the most exciting things that that you can undertake. So I'm just going to, I think I've got about three minutes. So I'm going to just very quickly talk to you about my background and how I came into book publishing and then give you three examples of different books, two of my own and another one that I've worked on relatively recently. So my background was not in publishing. The extent of my publishing knowledge was in fact a one day self-publishing workshop and a one day publishing workshop. What I learned very quickly was that I had the marketing acumen and the strategic background to pull it off. Um, to Dale's point earlier, it's not all about the content. So every single book that I work on now is very much coming at it from a marketing and a strategic viewpoint. Um, my background was, luckily enough, in marketing. So I'd owned a marketing company, Messenger Marketing, for five years. And prior to that, I'd worked in sponsorship um, on a global scale. So I used to sell the sponsorships, which is basically brokering corporate partnerships um, for Cirque du Soleil and all of Andrew Lloyd Webber's and, the, and Edgeley International, the Wiggles and a lot of other big names. So I knew how to broker deals and I thought, there's an exciting opportunity here. I can apply this to books. So my first book um, came out nearly three years ago. It was called Happiness Is um, and this is it. Um, what I did was, as I said, I had no knowledge. Um, and I also was very naive at the time. This book cost me $80,000 to put together, um, which, you know, my second book, Cubicle Commando, cost eleven. So I've learned a lot of lessons in between. Um, <laughs> what I did was I thought, well, I don't have $80,000. In fact, at the time I had about $800 that I could put towards this book. So I came up with indicative spreads. I came up with a 16-page document which was the cover. Like Dale said, to do that you know, first up is really, really important. Um, I then came up with indicative spreads as to how the book would look and author credentials and a whole lot of other things that publishers will need to see as well. I then went to a charity, Kids Helpline, and I said, which was something that I was very passionate about and, and a charity that I was already working with, and I said to them, look, this is an idea that I've got. You don't have a lot of tangible product at the moment. Um, are you interested in partnering? They said, we absolutely love it. Here's $20,000 and basically wrote me a check on the spot. And I thought, well, if a charity is going to do that, um, you know, there's something in this. So I then started to pre-sell to a whole lot of corporates. So I basically underwrote the cost prior to going to print, which was pretty exciting, having no knowledge in the publishing industry whatsoever. I did know how to broker deals though. So I now do that um, with Happiness Is. It also had a lot of um, strategic aspects to it. So um, it's a photographic compilation book. There are 300 Australians in there. There were 65 photographers. All of them sent me material. I didn't pay for any photos in the book other than I've got 24 celebrities. Um, again, people with a profile to actually um, from an endorsement and testimonial perspective, a lot of media, a lot of high profile people that I knew would help distribute as well. Um, so again, very strategic decisions around that. Um, once the book came out, I then had a tangible product. The media went ballistic. Um, because I self-published, I didn't have to compete with um, you know, publishers who might be putting out 60 books in a month and have one PR person um, looking after all of that. So I had a tangible product to hang the media off. The Kids Helpline partnership was fantastic. Um, they got a thousand books in exchange, so they were able to on sell for $35 and make a $15 profit. They also had an extraordinary database and we did breakfasts all over Australia where I spoke and all the proceeds of the book went to them. Um, a royalty went to them from every book in the bookshops. So a whole lot of strategic decisions all the way through. Once the book was out, I also then had a tangible product um, to go to people who I hadn't necessarily gone to before from a corporate perspective. So I identified Clinique Perfume, who had a perfume called Happy Hearts, and, um, and the, I can't remember what the other, anyway, Happy Hearts. And um, essentially I went to the marketing director and I said, look, I think there's a really good fit here. And she said, fantastic, I'll take 2,000 copies. Now, Happiness Is has now sold over 25,000 copies in Australia. Um, of that, only 4,000 through bookshops. So primarily, my markets are very much corporate and it's extraordinarily exciting. So that's done really well for me. Um, my second book, Cubicle Commando, is even more strategic. Um, our first print run, we've done 20,000 copies, which um, you know, a lot of people primarily would print, say, three to 5,000 on the first print run. 
but it's primarily been pre-sold. Uh, I've got a lot of case studies in there, so big corporates, um, Mercedes, IBM. It's a book aimed at entrepreneurs, so uh, internal entrepreneurs within corporations, and basically empowering them to work within a dirty big corporation. So it's a, it's a niche market. I, I identified a niche and I pre-sold to a number of different corporates. Um, so that's been really exciting. Also from a trade and consu consumer perspective, um, with this book, I've brought on board Red Balloon Days, for example, who I identified their target market is also wanting to get to entrepreneurs and people who are very creative and innovative within an organisation. So again, to Dale's point earlier, they've got a fantastic distribution base on their website. So we've done a, um, you know, purchase this book and go in the running to win a Red Balloon Day, which is essentially a $250 voucher of which we have a whole lot. Um, to go and have a red balloon day or dive with the sharks or whatever it happens to be. So again, a really good partnership from a distribution perspective. Um, so essentially, I pre-sell books um, to corporates and I come up with a whole lot of benefits. They get a number of copies of books, but then they also get a lot of perceived benefits. So I might say to them, um, for your investment, you know, it might be $20,000, so they get 1,000 books, but they'll also get um, me as the author. I'll say, I'll come in and speak to your team for half a day and we'll do a workshop and we'll talk all about distribution of this particular book, um, which is perceived value for them because again, as Dale said earlier, they love having the author coming in, but it's also great for me because I can come up with fantastic creative ways to distribute the book and, um, and that helps move more copies. So it's a really, really exciting um, opportunity, I think. Just very quickly, one other book that I worked on was through a traditional publisher. Traditionally, they had published books for other people and they came up with, this is relatively recently, they came up with the concept of doing a book all about um, childhood um, illnesses and how to prevent them. And they were very clever in as much as they approached um, a large hospital in Australia and they pre-sold ads up the back of the book. Now, they pre-sold ads to the tune of $466,000. The book cost about $150,000, but they made a lot of money before the book had even gone to print. But they had an issue because bookshops, a lot of the time, won't take books that have got ads smattered all through them. So they came to me and said, what do we do about this? And basically, I said, you know, you've kind of gone about it in a bit of a funny way. But um, one of the ad advertisers had a double page spread, it was a bank. So I went back to the marketing director and said, can we tap into your distribution base? Um, they identified 450,000 people who had kids and then agreed to do like a DL mailing statement saying, you know, purchase this book and a percentage of proceeds will go to the hospital and a percentage will go to um, um, the bank. So it worked really, really well. So there's lots and lots of opportunities and I could talk for a long time, but I know time is short, so thank you. Wow, thanks so much, Lisa. That was, that was awesome. So did, does that give you hope of what's actually possible? What, what could you do with your book? Now, this is cool. What about fiction? 